name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God and man. Tomorrow we are starting the fast of Jonah for three days. And it should be a period of uh, reflection and uh, humility and also um, a preparation for the Lent that is, will be coming soon. And of course, throughout the years, we have talked about um, Jonah and the whale and many, many things. Um, and each year, it seems the same talk. <laughs> but hopefully, um, it will be a little bit different um, this morning. Jonah and the coming Lent is all about change. And whatever we do in terms of any spiritual discipline is about change because we want to grow. We're not satisfied by where we are now. There's always room for growth, improvement, new heights that we seek, a new vision for our lives, and most importantly, every day we live is to be transformed in, uh, more and more and more into the likeness of Jesus. This is our calling. Yes, you do have a calling. It is not only for men in black. Each believer's calling is to be transformed into the likeness of the Lord, of Jesus himself. So every day, we strive, we focus, we pray, we fight our weaknesses, we love, we forgive. We do all these things because I have this goal. But change is hard, right? Change is hard. If you look at, at yourself, from taking care of your health, saving money, um, doing well in, in school, change is really hard. And this is what forced the Lord to send Jonah to the um, uh, weirdest of all places, which is the belly of a whale. Would you imagine you being alive in the belly of the whale? It is like so hard to imagine that. But we also face that belly of the whale, if not in literal terms, we face it in many situations in our lives. When we hit rock bottom, when we feel that we are going down and down and down and there is no way up, and I'm sure each one of us, either currently or in the past or in the future, have faced or will face a situation when he or she would feel that there is no way out. I'm really stuck. I have no voice. I have no, I have no strength. I have no hope. And I'm done. We're done with life. We're done with our faith in God. We're done with everything. And this is how Jonah felt. You're at the bottom of the bottom missed places in the whole world. And the more we descend, the more we go down, the more we are open for God to deal with us then. In thinking about change, um, this model was developed in facing addiction, but it, it applies on every aspect of our life. It is broken into five stages, and of course, life is not about this concrete boxes, but it's that, like, only for us to understand and we can go back and forth between these you know, stages. And I'll try to apply it on Jonah. I'll try to apply it on also our lives. 
So the first stage or the first point when you feel that there's no problem, you're pre-contemplating change. There's nothing wrong with me. Maybe it, it, is, it is wrong with them, <laughs> right? This is, uh, we do. Even in marriage, I am okay, but he or she is to be blamed. At work, I have no problem. They have the problem. My boss, my coworkers, the world, the environment. We can blame everybody else. So we are pre-contemplating. Yes, there is a problem, we know, but it is not mine, it is them. So let, so let them fix it first. And this is what Jonah had faced. God told Jonah, there's a problem with these people, and because I love them, go to them. He said, no, sorry, it is not mine. It is not me. These, these are not our people. They are not Jews. Therefore, I'm not responsible. Therefore, I will turn the other way. Then the second one is a contemplation. Fine, okay. Maybe there is like something I can do, but I'm still not so invested. Maybe at school, grades are going down. Right, guys? Sometimes we go down, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> they go down sometimes. And we can say, well, it's the teacher. She doesn't explain well, or he, or he is a horrible teacher. I'm fine, okay? And we can feel the pain of the grades going down. So deep down we say, okay, maybe I should sit more quietly in class, right? Maybe I should um, look ahead and see my homework coming up in a day or two. But we're not really yet invested. And then preparation, there is a big problem. Now you are at the belly of the whale. Now your, your grades have tanked. You're not a B or a C anymore. You're a D. And maybe it's an F. Now there is a problem, okay? I can go home. Um, how I'm, I'm gonna face my parents. I know my phone will be taken away, right? Or whatever will be taken away. Or even in relationships, okay? My marriage is going down the hill. And there is really a big problem and I have to take ownership of my mistakes. This is what Jonah felt when he was stuck in that belly of the whale. He listened and he prayed and he said, okay, I am in your hands. I am in your hands. There is a problem. I've been running away from you. I've been escaping my responsibility to listen to you. And now because I am stuck, I have no way else. I am taking ownership. And this is when change um, occurs. It occurs when the pain of change is much less than the pain of staying the same. When you stay the same, it is more painful and the price is more expensive to pay rather than to say, okay, I will change. There is pain in, in anywhere, and, and there's, pr there's price. But the price of the change is less than the price of staying the same. So I want us all to look at our life. When you maybe have hit rock bottom last week, last month, last year, yesterday, or you will hit it tomorrow, I promise you. There, there, there were some situations in your life when you're so, when you feel that you're, there is no way out. St. Paul even have felt that. In 2 Corinthians, he talked about his depression. Depression in the church, St. Paul, yes. St. Paul had faced depression. And he talked about it openly. He said that, I felt that the, 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 the sentence of death was upon me and I was despaired beyond imagination. And the word he, 
described or he used in, in, in its Greek uh, meaning is that it's being in a room without windows, without doors. Imagine that. If you are in a room, no windows and no doors. What kind of feeling? You're stuck. There's no way out. Exactly like Jonah and that belly of the whale. <laughs> How can, can he even survive? He had the sentence of death issued for him. And also, the same with us, with me, with you. In many situations, you feel there is no way out. What to do? Jonah prayed. Jonah cried out for help as he never prayed before. And maybe willingly or internally, he promised that God, if you get me out, I will just do what you say. I will follow what you want me to do, even if it's against my will. Even if you will send me to people I don't like, just get me out of here. I am ready. And this is what yani, happens. Prayer, a plan of uh, action, and then willingly going out and do what you have promised to do. This is the, uh, the action phase, doing. We lack doing. We all have wishful thinking. We, we all wish that our grades will be the best. We all w wish that we will go to the best school. We all wish that, that we will be promoted and, and have the best job ever. We all wish to save money and pay our debts. We all have wishes. But what makes the difference between one person and the other is the action, is the plan, is to taking responsibility, is to, is to listen to what I really need to do. And then keep doing, keep going. But here, there's a, there is also another concept. It is the language of descent, the language of going down, the experience of going down. We, we all want to go up. We all want to rise up on top of our world, on top of our, of our situation. But we, we fight this idea that in order to go up, we need to go down first. And this is what happened with Jonah. This is what happened with the Lord himself. In, in order to, to ascend and rise above death, he had to die. He had to go down, buried in the grave, in order to go up. So yes, we need to accept that the Lord will be guiding us before up. He will guide us to go down. And yes, this is the nature of life. And yes, and this is our human nature. Who needs some humility? Understanding that in order for me to get what I want, I need to work really hard. God will not give me gifts of wellness and uh, prosperity and rewards and blessings. Even blessings, I have to work for it. Remember Jacob? When he wrestled with God and he told him, I will not let you go un unless you bless me. And in Genesis, it, it is written, he fought, he wrestled with God. And he went out with a limp, right? This is the story of Jacob. Do you know it or not? Remember Sunday school? It's, a, it's in the Bible. Google it. Okay. <laughs> Jacob wrestled with God. In order to receive a blessing, he wrestled. And he went down first in order to ascend. So maybe the message for us this morning, don't wait until life forces you to go down. Don't wait until there is a big warning sign 
that that's it, there is no way out. But take charge and listen to what God is telling you, even if it's against your wishes. Jonah's problem, he had people in boxes, good people versus bad people. My people versus the other people. And God had a different agenda. So maybe it is our time, this coming fast, and for Lent is to listen, and is, and is to look inward, and examine in which point we are, which stage we are. Are you blaming everybody else and you are, you're an angel? You're a victim? Or it is a shared responsibility where, yes, you may be a victim to life circumstances, but your responsibility is to go out of these circumstances. Don't remain a victim. Don't remain um, taken for granted by some people in your life. Or don't remain in your situation that you don't like. Go out of it. Whether grades, whether education, whether work, relationship, finances, maybe a sin, maybe a habit that's taking hold of your time, of your energy, of your life, maybe some kind of addiction. And yes, we, we, we can be addicted, but we are good people in church. Yes, especially those people in the church, they can be addicted to many things, not the, like not only the big things, Maybe you're addicted to your ego, <laughs> addicted to your comfort, addicted to your self-image and how you keep it presentable and nice in front of people. Maybe you're addicted to your extreme ways of keeping your diet. Maybe you're addicted to stepping every, over everybody else in your life to be on top. Whatever addiction you have, if it's taking hold of your life on the account of other people and, and, and their well-being, you need to take ownership of your responsibility. I hope this morning I, I offered you some kind of different or a fresh message about Jonah, about Lent, about our life, because at the end, we are called to strive to be that image. And that image is not acquired only when you pray one time a day, but it's through every minute you live on this earth, through every aspect of your life. Learn the language of descent in order to ascend. To him all glory forever. Amen.